In this video, we're going to learn how to use the apply function in pandas. To start, we're just going to load in pandas as PD in a data set. Now what apply does is it lets you run a function on all the elements of a pandas series, or it could be a column of a data frame. And it also lets you apply a function along either the rows or columns of a data frame. So we'll give some examples of how to do those things. We'll start by showing an example of using apply just on a single column. So what this is going to do is run a user defined function on all of the elements that exist within a column, which is just a pandas series. So I'm defining a function here called my function. It's going to take X, which is the data value itself, and then two extra arguments, H and L, which will be used within the function to figure out if it's going to return high, medium, or low. And with dot apply, we can run this function on a column of our data frame. So we're going to run this on this power level column. And for each value in this column, it's going to either return high, medium, or low, depending on whether the value here is higher than the H and L values that we pass in as extra arguments. So to do this, we're running it on a single column. So first we want to get that column. So we're going to say data power level, that's getting us the power level column, which is a pandas series. Then we're going to do dot apply. The first thing we pass in is the name of the function that we're going to run. We called that my function. So that's going to be here. And then the first argument here, X, that's where the data enters into the function. So apply is automatically going to be passing in each element of the series as an argument to X. So that's already taken care of. But we have some additional arguments here that we need to supply to this function as well. So then we need this extra argument in our apply call called args. And this allows us to pass in these extra arguments. So here we're going to say args equals 10,000. That's going to be passed in for our H value. And 2,000, that's going to be passed in for our L value. And then those will be used inside of the function here to determine what is considered high and medium and low. And so when we run this, it will apply our function to that column, and we should end up with a new column, essentially, where everything is listed as high, medium, or low. So let's run that and see that that is the case. Now, in some cases, when you're running apply on a column, you might not need this extra args argument. We only needed that because the function that we ran called for having extra arguments. But in some cases, you might only need to pass in the data itself, and you wouldn't need to have these extra arguments there at all. Now, this functionality is essentially the same as what you can do with the dot map function, which also works on series. But apply makes things a bit easier because it allows for this extra args argument here that lets you pass in extra arguments. And apply also works across rows or columns, so you can use it on a data frame as well to potentially calculate aggregations across different axes of your data frame. So we'll give some examples of doing that as well. So first, we're going to show how you can apply a function to each column of a data frame. So to apply a function to each column of a data frame, we first have to run apply on a data frame itself instead of just a column. So we're going to say data.apply. And now I've defined this simple mode function here, which is going to take the column which is a pandas series, and just run the dot mode operation on it. So it's going to return the mode or most common value as the result. And so we're going to supply that, this mode function, as what we're applying. And then axis equals zero will specify running it on each column or along the rows instead of running it on each row. So what this is going to do is essentially return the mode of each column, which will essentially return an aggregation that is kind of a summary row for each of the columns. So let's run this and see what the result is. So you can see that our original data frame had three columns and a bunch of rows. And now by applying the mode to each column or along rows, we ended up with the mode of each column. Now you can do essentially the same thing, but applying a function to each row instead of each column. To do that, you just change the argument axis to one. So we'll give an example of doing that below. We'll have a different function here. What this is doing is finding the max 
of the lengths of each of the objects in the row. So it's if it's a number, it's converting it to a string first, and then it's finding what the max length is. So for instance, this row here, you have 12,000 orange and saying it looks like the maximum length of anything in that row is probably six. And we'll just run that on each row and then return the result as what amounts to a new column or an aggregate column. So we'll show how to run that here. We're defining the function. Again, we take our data frame dot apply. We pass in the name of the function here. And now we're just saying axis equals one because we want to run this function on each row instead of each column. So when we run this, we end up with what amounts to a new column where this function has been run against each row. And there's an entry here that denotes the maximum length of all the objects that were in that row. Now, if you're going to use apply to create a new column by running it across all the rows like this with axis equals one, a useful thing you can do is reference columns you want to pull information from within your function. So maybe you don't want to be using data from all the different columns in your function. You might only want to use data from a few different columns. In this case, we ran something that was operating on all the data in the row, but in some cases you might only be interested in dealing with data from like one or two columns at the same time. So we'll give an example of how you might do something like that below. We're going to define a new function. In this case, when we apply this function to each row, X can be thought of as a row of our data frame. So that means X has all the same columns as the columns in our data frame. So if we wanted to take some data values from those columns and create a string out of them, we can do that directly using the names that are in that data frame. So what we're going to do with this particular function is create a string where some values that are in the string are going to be populated from values in the columns. So basically what all it's doing is taking a row, returning a string where the value here is going to be the value in the species column. So that's X dot species is going to be populated in this spot in the string. And this spot is going to be populated by whatever value is in the power level column for that row. So basically all this is doing is creating a bunch of strings, one for each row, where the values here and here will be populated by the values in the columns for that particular row. And then again, to actually apply this, we're saying data.apply, the name of the function. We're going to do axis equals one to apply it to each row. And we'll end up with a different string, one for each row, that's saying the species of that character with a power level of power level. So let's print that out and see that we have basically a formatted text readout now of some of the information in the columns of our data frame. So this is a relatively simple example of doing some things on different columns for each row. But you could imagine, for instance, if your data frame had several different numeric columns and you wanted to do some calculations on values in all those different columns, this is a way you could go about doing that by running apply to on each row with axis one and then accessing the values you're interested in using x dot whatever the name of the column is and then you could carry out your function and return a value for every single row. Now all the code used in this video is available in the description below. If you found this video useful, you can drop a like and hit subscribe. And thanks for watching.